Hey guys and welcome to the vlog. How are you guys? Um, if you follow me on Instagram, then you will know that I passed my final year exams and I am officially a vet. So welcome to my first ever vlog as a vet. <laughs> very, very strange. I feel like something should have changed in my head or I should be like a different person and I'm not. I'm still the exact same. So I don't know when I get that kind of professionalism that comes with being a vet, but maybe it's like a slow process. <laughs> um, so yeah, I thought I'd kind of just talk about what's going on and what I'll be doing and will I, like some people have been asking me, will I still be on YouTube? Will I still be making vlogs? Like, am I gonna go and get a job? Am I gonna move overseas? Am I gonna keep riding the horses? Like, there's a lot of questions. So I thought I would kind of cover them on this video and yeah, just have this for you guys to refer to. Um, but yeah, but this is kind of gonna be a yard vlog as well. So first I'm gonna set up some little jumps and get in the horses and yeah, I'll see you when I set up some jumps. Okay, so I have some jumps set up now, which I will show you. So it is four bounces on a curve with a canter pull each side of it. So the distance between them is just the standard bounce distance, which is three of my steps, but you should probably work out the meters and um, determine how many of your steps that should be because I've walked it out a million times. So yeah, um, it's three of my steps in between each pole. I have them all down as poles to start with. And then slowly I will raise up the middle four. So the reason I'm doing them on a curve instead of a straight line is to try and get the horses even as possible on both reins. Bobby's going to do some demonstrating for you. <laughs> so on a bounce in a straight line, although you can come off it on both reins, your horse can change its lead over the bounces often to its more dominant lead um, whereas when you're on the circle the horse is forced to stay on the left or the right lead because they're turning in that direction so it's really good for finding out if your horse is kind of um, weaker on one side then you can keep doing it to that side and just build up that strength and it's also good for the suppleness so they're going to bend around your inside leg and keep that little slight bend to the left or the right um, and learn to kind of jump and stay supple and round over the jump. So that is the goal. And that is what I'm gonna be doing on Cal. So I'm going up to the field now to get Cal and Dali, which brings me on to the first topic that I'm gonna to talk about, which is what I'm going to be doing right now this summer. So I haven't applied to any jobs yet um, because I was kind of planning on taking the summer off and just competing and riding the horses, which coronavirus kind of put a dent on that plan. <laughs> but the plan is still to kind of take my time looking for a job. I'm not in a huge kind of rush. Um, I want to find somewhere that's kind of right for me and I feel like the right opportunity will come along. So for the summer and until I start working, I will be riding Cal and Dali. Um, which are two homebreds if you guys don't know and hopefully get them out to shows. Shows are meant to be starting at the maybe like July so hopefully that happens and I can compete them at that stage. But for now we're just training and riding. Obviously they're both young so there's always stuff to work on. So that is what's going on with them and then the other two mares Fiona and Welbeck. You should know that Welbeck is in full from my last video and Fiona, we are putting her in full. So that's what they're going to be doing. So yeah, they'll still kind of have a job even if I'm working somewhere. And yeah, the boys will be ridden for the summer. So that is what's happening with the horses anyway. Um, I won't have to sell any of them, thank goodness. So yeah, now I'm up at the field, I'm going to get them. All right, so I have the two horses in here. There's Cal, there's Dali. It is seriously hot today, like 23, 24 degrees, which I know in other countries that might not be very hot, but it's freaking very hot here. So I won't be doing a huge amount, I'll be keeping the jumps nice and low, but, um, but the exercise I have set up is all about like technique and the rideability, not about the height of the jumps. So it's perfect for this kind of weather. And Dali will just be doing flat work today. We'll be jumping him at the weekend, I think, which will be the first time back jumping in a long time, so that could be exciting. 
I also almost completely forgot to say, but thank you so much for 60,000 subscribers! How crazy is that? That is unreal. Um, yeah, thank you so much. It's just, it's uh, created so many opportunities for me, this YouTube channel, and it's basically all down to you guys. So I am very, very grateful for everyone that watches and likes and comments and subscribes. You all mean the world to me. So thank you very much. Um, to celebrate, because I also reached like 40,000 on Instagram around the same time, I am holding a giveaway on my Instagram account, which will be up the day before this video goes up. So you still have a few days to enter. So get over to my Instagram as soon as you can and enter that. It'll be really simple. It'll just be like, follow me and follow, I think just Mackie Ireland um, is donating some prizes as well as Livery Man and Leo Vesh. So lots of treats up for grabs like a bridle, a Mackie saddle pad, a Mackie cooler, which is really exciting. So yeah, make sure you head on to my Instagram to get involved with that. Hello, how is it going? Future Holly here doing a little voiceover on this um, video just to make it a little bit more exciting, I suppose. Um, I won't be voiceovering the whole thing because there's quite a lot of footage and probably not that much to say but um it might break it up a bit if i talk a little bit so at this stage i've already warmed up um i've done a lot of walking and trotting on a long rain long and low stretching them all out um and now i've picked them up into more collected frame and we are just trotted over some trolley poles doing some circles making sure he's listening to me already practicing the bending around my leg that we will be using when we are going over the poles. So now I trot over the poles and you know this might be overkill because he is an experienced horse, he knows how to jump things, but I always you know just maximize the chance of success for the horse basically. Like I probably could have had them all up as bounces and he would have gone through it not too bad. But this just gives you the chance to figure out if he has a little wobble, does he tend to drift already, you know, anything like that. You like there's no harm in trotting over at once. Why wouldn't you? I'm all yeah, I always do this. Even with the experienced horses, why not? You know, if I have a grid set up, I just trot down at first. Just in case they have a little wobble or, so, or just have a look at something. It just means they don't have that wobble while they're jumping and then associate the jumping with you know maybe a kind of scary experience or something you know i'm always just erring on the side of caution i suppose so yeah i trot down trot through it ask for a little bend the counter pose are actually perfect because he puts exactly two trot strides in between each one so it works out nicely for him and i give him a little pat always um and i actually think i go into the counter next yeah so again i trotted over them both reins he was perfect so I said right ready to go into canter so I went into canter and this wasn't probably the best transition in the whole entire world but you know you got you gotta do what you gotta do it was the best we got at the moment so yeah we canter over it now my reins are a little bit long um but anyway so I canter over it um just you know little bounce strides already I could feel that he was drifting to the left when I was on the right rein. And this is a common theme throughout this day and it's something I work on and we it does improve and it's something that I will keep working on, obviously. But that is the point of this exercise. It calls you out if you have any weakness. <laughs> so I just do it two or three times on each rein and then I switch reins. So now I am on the left rein and I found that he was much straighter on this rein in that he didn't fall out but he almost fell in because he didn't quite want to bend but definitely 
much better like this is his strong rein he was way better on the left rein overall i'm being really picky if i pick something wrong with the left rein um, he was a little bit quicker through it because I think because he was going straighter, you know, if a horse is drifting to the side, they can't really go forward. So they end up going slower, I suppose. And uh, there I kind of messed up the stride, sacked the jockey, but I didn't mess it up the next time. So rehire the jockey, I suppose. And the next step is to put up the two middle parts of the bounce. I don't put them all up. Um, and I didn't only put one up. I, I, you know, I pushed myself. I put two tiny bounces up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just put the middle two parts up um, to keep it nice and even. And then did it on both reins. And he was very good. Again, drifted. So I need to keep my outside leg on. Um, you can see there, like, he's going over the very far side of the last pole which is you know very strong indicator that he is drifting to the left and i just need to be really strong with my outside leg and my outside rein um and it did improve over the course like that time was slightly better i suppose maybe uh, <laughs> it felt better but it might not look so much better on the video then on the left rein as i was saying he was a little bit quicker through it so I just kind of sat up and was like, whoa, and he was very, very good. Gave him a pat, of course, and yeah, just did it a few more times just to keep it even. Because with this kind of exercise, it is kind of strength training and, you know, building muscles. So usually I'm the type of person that once they do it right, I leave them. But this is the kind of exercise that it's, you know, it's repetition. It builds up strength in them. You have to do it a few times to for to work I suppose it's like lifting weight you can do one good I don't know how to lift, like a squat like how do you lift weights I don't know anything about weights but you can do one good one but you have to do it a few times to actually build up those muscles so that it's easier to do it each time if that makes sense at all I hope it does um, so that's why I do it I kind of always did it three times on each rein just to keep it even so now I have all the poles up and little bounces well except the last two um, got a little bit close there but um, yeah, he was jumping it well. You know, he wasn't he wasn't perfect, but it was his first time doing this exercise, so lots to work on. And yeah, at least I've identified the problem now, so it's nice to be able to do that. Also, just a note about my position, I suppose, is that through this, I was really working on keeping my legs still, my body pretty upright. Like I didn't want to be throwing my body onto his neck you know the like it's about they're about 20 centimeters off the ground um and then just keeping my hands like with a gentle kind of consistent contact on his mouth i suppose that's the best way to to phrase it i wasn't holding him up because i wanted him to learn and him to make the mistakes but i just had like a gentle pressure on on his mouth so as you can see the left rein is just like it's just a lot better it's a lot smoother it's yeah he's a lot more balanced he doesn't drift out and that is what this exercise is for it is to call out those little tiny flaws because yeah i'll never have to do this in a course but it's that slight drift that one day you know turning sharp right to a fence he might just drift out that bit mess up the stride and that is what will cost you a pull at a higher level so you just have to be really really precise and a bit OTT, I suppose. <laughs> really strict. That's me. So that was it. That was all the jumping. As you can see, I kept it very, very nice and small. He was actually sweating because it was so hot, even just with that light work. But it was still good for him. Here, I'm just cantering him off. Um, just getting him to stretch a little bit over the back. He can get a little bit short-necked in the canter. So I like to stretch him off and encourage him to work a little bit lower. In the canter before i trot him off as usual trotting him off long and low on both reins for about five minutes or so um it's just really really important to warm down your horses as well as you warm them up so yeah that is it for this ride i hope you enjoyed this little voiceover see ya
Hey guys, I'm just walking Cal off now. Oh my god, I'm so hot. Like, I picked the worst time of the day to ride. It's literally 4 p.m., like the hottest time of the day. And I'm here riding my horse. Poor Cal, he's sweating. Um, as you can see, I only did very small, but it was definitely enough to get what I wanted out of the exercise. So I definitely noticed that on the right rein, he would um, drift to the left, so he'd drift out, and on the left rein he would drift to the inside. So it was just very interesting to see. I already kind of had an idea that that was the case, but when you do this exercise it just really exaggerates any sort of um, inequality in the horse on each rein, so it's ideal for that. So for that reason I had to put more outside leg on on the right rein to keep him in and to keep a smaller circle while also keeping that bend. See the thing is that if you get the bend you you also risk losing the shoulders so they start drifting. So say they're burnt, bent to the left then they'll start drifting. Say they're bent to the right they'll start drifting to the left sometimes. That's why you have to keep your outside leg on. Um, so yeah, it's this really fine balance. Like it looks so simple, especially with the jumps really, really small, but there are so many things you can get out of this exercise. This is his first ever time doing it. So I was very, very pleased with how he managed. Um, like he finds the athletic part of it very easy. And um, so it was just more working on straightness and his suppleness to each rein. Um, and then on the left rein, I just had to keep a bit of extra inside leg on just to keep him out um, and going around the out towards the outside of it more and um, so yeah it was really really interesting another good thing to do is to look at your tracks so I can see the marks that I made going over it and I can see that if I'm not in the middle if I'm a bit to the outside if I'm a bit to the inside um, it's kind of a good way to see if you're not able to really gauge where you are as you're doing the exercise it can come up a bit quick you might not be able to really like figure out at the same time as doing everything else so it's good to look back at your the marks you made in the sand um, and see how you did. Um, that is it for Cal. Now it is time to get Dali. And when I'm riding Dali, I will talk to you a little bit about what job I'm looking to get. Yes, and where am I gonna stay in Ireland? This is the big question. <laughs> and will I be keeping going with my YouTube channel? I know, uh, big question. <laughs> Oh, Cal, you love being the centre of attention, eh? So I just hosed off Cal and I've decided it is too hot. <laughs> so I'm going to lunge Dally instead of riding him because he actually wasn't ridden yesterday anyway, so it's probably better off that I lunge him. So he's not too, too hot. Oh, he likes to smile as well. Hello, we are smile here. <laughs> you just do a weird job though. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go lunch him now. Cal, or Dal even, is looking nice and shiny. He's finally lost his winter coat, although he's still holding onto a bit on his belly there. Of course, the sun has gone behind the clouds now, so you don't get the full shine. So yeah, good boy. So basically with him, just a bit of walk, trot, nothing too strenuous, I don't really, you know when they're young, like you don't want to be doing a lot of tight circles at a, like a fast pace. I wouldn't really canter him on the lunge at all. So it's just more to kind of just get him, you know, working a bit over his back, just chilling out, and um, that's about it. So that's all he's doing today because he's only four. So um, as opposed to Cal, who is six, so obviously they're on very different um, types of work at the moment. But I just, you know, there's no shows, there's nothing to be rushing him to, so he can just chill out, kind of build a bit of muscle slowly, and that's it. Hello again! So I am walking cat, no, Dali. I'm so bad at their names, I do always get their names wrong. Um, so I'm walking Dali off now on the lunge. He's just chilling. So, yes, the next topic to talk about. Dun, dun, dun. Um, where I'm going to work and what I'm going to do. So, 100% I'm going to do equine. 
so that's an easy decision there um, because if you don't know um, with my degree like I can work in smalls, mixed, I can work in a lab, I can do loads of things. You don't have to like specialise in a certain species, I specialised in all of them. Um, as for where I'm going to be working, I'm really, really torn because everyone always says don't work, um, don't take your first job at home because when you're just at like just at college you are going to make some silly mistakes. Also everyone around me knows me and they but they have like they know me as a student they know me as a kid so it is hard to like change from that kid that like rides horses to actually being their vet you know it's, it's a hard kind of change to make so that like that, that's a bit of an issue um but then on the other hand i want to still right be able to ride the horses so i can't be too far away which is kind of hard the other thing is that, well, there's not exactly an abundance of jobs because of the coronavirus. And there's just like, no one's really advertising jobs at the moment, um, especially in equine for some reason. So it's not like I have a huge like, choice of where to go anyway. The other option is to go overseas. So I really, really want to go to Australia at some point because if you don't know, I was born there. So I have an Australian passport and everything. So I can actually fly there like today, even with the coronavirus, that's no problem. So there are some internships in Australia that I can do, like a six month internship, would be, which would be ideal. I actually did apply to one and I haven't heard anything back. So I don't know, should I, I don't know, like what's the normal time that it takes for someone to get back to you? I have no idea. <laughs> so that would be ideal because it would be from August to January, which is the Australian breeding season, um, but it is our winter. So I would be missing nothing here and I'd be back in time to for our own foals to be born which would be ideal. So that is another option, which would be a very good option. But the problem is that I'm a bit late to this game and majority of internships um, are already full for this year. And um, you have to apply like ages ago. And I just was so stressed about exams and stuff. Like not many people, not like, barely any of my friends applied to jobs. Like don't just think it's not, it's just me. It's not like the majority of my friends don't have jobs or anything yet. Like they just haven't looked, we haven't applied to anything yet. So that's always something I can do next year if I want. So yeah, basically, I don't know, is the short answer. All I know is it's going to be equine and I would like to do reproduction, but I won't do like pure reproduction straight off the bat because I want to get like a general, um, general experience first. So yeah, who knows? Um, so that's what I'll be doing and where. And YouTube. So with YouTube, it's a little bit like, it's hard to know how professional this is. I don't know, like some per people would definitely be turned off by the fact that I have like a YouTube channel and they probably wouldn't think it's very professional and they probably wouldn't get it like a lot of people wouldn't understand. It is definitely a bit of a younger generation thing, although it's really interesting to see like a lot of professionals starting to make YouTube channels like Edwina Tops Alexander, my idol when it comes to show jumping. She has, she's setting up a YouTube channel. I'm like, what? that's class. Um, so it is becoming more of like a normal thing to do, but still there would be people that are like, oh, she shares a lot on social media, maybe not the most professional. Saying that. YouTube has given me an extremely large amount of opportunities. Like I've met people all over the world. I've seen great practice in Dubai and everything because of people I met on YouTube, i.e. Lauren. Um, so it's just crazy. And it's not something I think I should give up. And I know it is just a hobby for me, but it is also like a great source of advertisement. Like you guys all know me kind of thing. And it definitely has its advantages, especially if I were to set up my own business or something like that. Um, yeah, this would definitely have its advantages. So to be honest, I'm just going to keep going with my YouTube as I usually would. Um, you know, like it is, like I am who I am. I'm not going to change. Go on, Dally. I'm not going to change just, I don't know, to like pretend to be someone else. Um, so yeah, I'm going to keep going. Obviously, everything I do on my channel is pretty professional. Like I don't put up, I don't like curse and put up videos like slating other people and like giving out and I'm never involved in any drama or anything like that so I think in that regards I'm pretty safe you know we'll just have to wait and see but yeah I will be making videos for as long as I can obviously say if I went to Australia or something 
I don't know what I'd make videos on. Obviously I'd be able to make one or two, like what I'm doing. And maybe if I rode a few horses there for the crack, but um, yeah, it would be obviously a lot less content than I have just being here at home, riding the horses every day. This is like ideal for YouTube. But um, yeah, it's just something that I will cross that bridge when I come to it, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm kind of a firm believer in what's meant for you won't pass you by as long as you kind of put yourself out there a bit. So I'm just keeping, staying open-minded and Charlie's just looking at me. He just wants to stop. He's done a poo-poo. Uh, yeah, that's all my professionalism there. He's done a poo-poo. Um, but yeah, basically I'm just going to keep my hand open to different possibilities of what I want to do. Um, and then I'm sure the right thing will come along. So for now, expect lots of videos because I'm at home all summer. Um, then who knows, but hopefully it'll only be good, whatever the change is. So yes, that is the update. I'm going to bring Dali in now because he's sick of walking around in circles. Um, and I'll see you in a bit. Hello, Hopper. You managing the yard duties? Good boy. So Mr. Cal is eating his feed. So is Mr. Dali. And I have something exciting to show you kind of chickenies. Paint. So I am finally have enough time to undertake the colossal task of repainting all my poles. Um, they haven't been repainted since I got them quite a few years ago. Is that, that's really bad, isn't it? That is bad. I'm also gonna be repainting the stable doors because they are grimy and gross. But first, the poles. I'm so excited. I'm gonna sand them. I have like a base coat. I have the color part. I've never painted in my life. Like I have never done painting, like outdoor painting. I've obviously painted like pictures in school but I've never painted anything like proper. I'm so excited, but I know I will be bored in two seconds. <laughs> Anyone have any tips for painting poles? Like ways to make it exciting or even just tips to make it like work. Um, I hope I got all the right stuff. And um, I got a new paintbrush and everything. <laughs> I don't know. I was also wondering, would you be interested in like a series where I do up the yard? Because that is what I'm going to be doing this summer. Because obviously, as you know now, I have nothing else to do. <laughs> so I'm going to repaint all the poles, obviously the doors. I'm going to be taking out this shed because she nasty. And um, there's also a stable around the back that's disgusting. I'm going to power wash and clean out all the stables with, with the rubber matting, which is going to be such a task, like such a task, but it has to be done. I say, yeah, they're fairly dirty underneath the rubber matting, which is kind of a downfall of rubber matting is that um, lots of dirt and urine and all sorts gets underneath it. So that needs to be all pulled up and power washed out. That will also need to be done probably again next year before the mares fall because that's where the mares are going to be falling. So we need it nice and clean for them. But this will be like a start to that job. Um, so that's easier to do next time. So yeah, would you be interested in that? Let me know. Hopper and his chickens. He used to kill them, I hate to say. He actually did, did kill one at the very start. And now they're his best friends. No, you need to stay there, huh? Oh, you're so close. So yeah, now he minds them. He stops anything else killing them. He's such a good boy. You're so clever. Yes, you. So the boys are back out in their field. I have the gorgeous well back here. Mom to be. He's just loving life at the moment. And there's Fiona in the middle, who is hopefully in full as we speak, but we'll find out in two weeks' time. So yeah, that's where I'm going to leave the vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. Here's my darling Welbeck. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Let me know what you think of that jumping exercise. And let me know what you think about me being a vet, because I think it's kind of scary, but hopefully you guys have more faith in me. Um, yeah, my next video will probably be me jumping Dally for the first time since he went on his break, like... We went on mini break. He just hasn't really jumped in a long time, probably like a month. So 
yeah, he's gonna be pretty excited. It's gonna be, it's gonna be entertaining, I think. So I'm excited for that. So yeah, stay tuned. Where are we, darling? See what I mean? She's gotten so affectionate since she's been in full, huh? These hormones are doing funny things. <laughs> All right, see you guys.